We're back. We're back. Hey, we're back. We're back for season three. Season three. We're missing one guy, but we got another guy. (laughs) We got Johnny Dubs. The mystery guest. Johnny Dubs. You can't see him, but you can hear him. Yes, I'm here. As always, you got me, Mosey P, and Marky G. We're missing B Dubs. Yes, sir. He'll be back shortly with us sooner or later. It's been a long six months, five months. How long it's been? I don't know, a year. A whole season ago. Yep, season three. Back again. So where you guys want to jump into this? You guys want to jump straight into the deep water with John Jones against Serial? Oh, we can go into that hole pile yeah let's do that okay we'll start there episode one what was it titled the big boys or something like that right the big boys and who are we talking about the original we were talking about cereal Cereal gone and francis nagano and look where cereal has come from then till now that man's gotten one title shot but wait wasn't he the interim champion he was. He was an interim champion. Now he's got another title shot. What's your thoughts on it, Mark? My thoughts on that is that's the perfect matchup to make right now. It was either going to be Serial or Stipe, but Stipe has been act- inactive for so long. No one really knows what's it, what exactly has been going on with that. So it's the right matchup to make. It's the most exciting out of all of them. John, I, uh, I I think it's undeserved, but there's no one else to fill that spot. I mean, he got his uh, win over Tuivasa, and other than that, he hasn't done anything since he got you know wrestled out wrestled by Nganu. So, but there's no one else to really match up with. So I, I, that's a, as good as we're gonna get. And uh, I, I think uh, it'll be an interesting uh, debut for John Jones, just because of how technical, like technically sound, Silgon's striking is. You know he's the underdog too, right, John Jones? Like the betting underdog. What? Yeah, that's why I said like <laughs> this dude's the underdog when Serial got out wrestled by Francis. With so, no kneecaps. No kneecaps, Francis out wrestled this man. I can understand uh, why the people are, why he's an underdog, because, you know, he's had, what, three plus years off, and he's moving up weight. Mm-hmm. When was his uh, last fight? It's been pretty much three years. Beginning of 2020 against uh, Reyes? Did he even I have know. a COVID fight? No, I think it was before COVID. Yeah, I think it was right before COVID, so 2019 probably. Let's find out. I'm going to lean towards February or January of 2020. But, I mean, you had other contenders that you could have used. Like, there was always Steve Pay there. There's always Curtis Blades, obviously. He still has a good record. But name-wise, biggest fight-wise, this is the right one to make. I think uh, the fight night in Paris was such a big draw that the uh, UFC is also having that consideration with making Gon the fight. They want to get that market share. His last fight was February 2020. So, yeah, by the time the fight happens... It'll be over three years. Uh, two years to bulk up and one more year to chill. And also to work out a contract. Obviously, he just signed his new eight-fight deal. John Jones? Yeah. John Jones just signed a new eight-fight deal. Ooh. They found that money by getting rid of Francis. Oh, yeah, he got... We'll talk well, about that after that. Oh. Let's, let's yeah. continue on with John Jones versus... Serial. Tyrell. Uh, 
you know, we butcher names on this podcast all day, every day, especially me. All of us. I blame yeah. the whiskey, even though it's not really the problem. Don't let me start reading names off a card. It's it's not good. It's hooked on phonics. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think it's gonna be uh, easy. John Jones with victory. Um, I, I don't think it's gonna be close at all. Um, just because like John Jones is so so good at just fighting in general. Like his fight IQ is just off the charts. And now you add uh, the size he's going to have. And I know people are saying, like, he's an underdog or whatever. But I, I, you, you just can't bet against John Jones. That's a dumb bet to make. I'd like to argue it's going to be closer to a coin flip than people think. Just because we haven't seen John Jones with all this weight on him. We haven't seen how he's going to move. We don't know how leaving Greg Jackson camp is going to affect him, which I don't think that's going to be a big deal because John Jones is, does have such a great fight IQ, but we just has, we have to see his movement. If he doesn't have that movement and that uh, avoidability that he used to have in light heavyweight as a heavyweight, he could get hit more and heavyweights hit a lot harder than light heavyweights. So it could be interesting, but yeah, I would lean more towards John Jones winning this. I like Cyril, but I don't think he's he's not that knockout power that Francis had to make it more interesting. You know what's strange? I wonder who's going to be the aggressor. You get what I'm saying? I think, I think Jones. Yeah, one hundred percent Jones. Because you know, Cyril likes to circle around, stay out, and, you know, he goes in and out, in and out. There's a little hits here and there until he catches him good with a counter punch or some type of counter, and then he goes for the kill. It should be an interesting yeah. fight. I think Jones will just be putting the pressure on him, especially because he knows how gone fights, and he always likes to put, you know, his opponents on the back foot. And uh, I remember with Chael Sonnen talking about how he He's never wanted to quit a fight more than when he was fighting Jones because it was just a constant just beating that he took. And it was like, I mean, anything he had it, in all his fights, that was like the worst fight he had. And uh, that kind of just a power and aggression. And then you multiply that to the heavyweight. You know, I think Jones is going to... Because I've seen the training footage of him, and he looks good for having all that weight on him. So... Take down in the first yeah, round. Yeah, he did it the right way. No. You think he'll last? John oh, Jones is going to download for the first round. I think he'll download the first round. I say a third round finish. Check the schedule. Either, either three or four, third or fourth round, or it goes to a decision, but John Jones victory. Scheduled to work that week. John Jones pulls a Tony Ferguson ankle picks and Darce choke. I'm just kidding. I actually don't expect that at all. I like uh, referee stoppage from ground and pound. Yeah, his elbow. I'm gonna go. Is... I was gonna say I'm gonna go old school spinning elbow from John Jones. Is it gonna be as fast? No, but it'll be more powerful. <laughs> oh, for sure. I haven't seen what he looked like at heavyweight right now. How, how's he look, John? He looks he looks solid. He looks... Uh, I, I already would never want to run into John Jones at night, but now I, he's just even more scary. Um, and I, I think he would have beat Nganu easily as well, despite his knockout power. How's his legs look? I mean, they're John Jones legs. Oh, okay. Very skinny. On like the, chickens. Uh, okay. he, he, he bulked up, up top. Oh, yeah. I, I think my biggest problem with his whole, like, trying to bulk up thing is, if he would have said he was trying to get around, you know, 245, around there, 
I like that a lot because I feel like that's close to a natural weight for him. And I think he could still keep that elusiveness. And we've seen a lot of great uh, heavyweights at 245. But he said he wanted to get up to 265. I don't know where he's at right now, but 265 sounds too much for me. I think that was... I, I think he's re really, uh, walked that back. Because I think he was at 240-something, maybe 250, last I checked. Okay, and great. he looked good at that age. So I don't think yeah, that's what I was get... about to say. And I, I guess he was trying to get to that weight for the Nganu fight just to be on an even kill because he was too small. I think he was at 230, 235. So that would make sense why Jones, uh, or Jones would want to go up to 265 going against Nganu. But I think he's Walk that back because he's not fighting him anymore. The cereal's just as big. It's but cereal works game, for that way. Yeah. Yeah. And Gondu had to cut weight. You know, he, he's walking around. I think someone said like 290, maybe 300. He's huge. I would cut that back if I was him too. He did look winded in some of those fights. Speaking of Naganu, I wonder what happened with the whole contract. Because he was supposed to be the most paid heavyweight with whatever offer they were giving him. Is it really yeah, boxing? He, well, I think he uh, overplayed his hand, to be honest. I think he has outweighing his uh, star power and his uh, name recognition and everything. And we saw this when he first fought Stipe, he was very arrogant because he had gotten over uh, the Overeem fight and, you know, his star was rising and he was talking all this shit to Stipe, how he's just going to beat his ass and all that. Very cocky, very arrogant. And then he loses and he was humiliated. But, you know, since he beat Stipe, he's been getting more uh, overestimating his abilities and everything. And the simple fact is he's not a draw. He does not bring his pay-per-view numbers. He doesn't promote the fights at all. I mean, all he has is his knockout power. And even that is limited. And I don't... The fact that Gon lost to the wrestling is just... So that, that speaks terribly of Gon because this is an awful wrestling. Like Anyone with any skill would have beat... Nganu there. So Nganu, all he has is that, that knockout punch. And then he was trying to negotiate. You know, he wanted to fight outside of uh, the contract, trying to get that uh, Conor McGregor money. But the thing is, and even uh, what's his name? Usman wanted to, was talking about Canelo and trying to get that Conor McGregor money. But these guys aren't. Conor McGregor, they don't have that star power, that promotion, to be able to bring in all these um, fans to watch. And because uh, who would you actually pay for the pay per view to see Tyson Fury and Ngannou, or would you uh, pirate it? Let's be honest. A hundred percent purchasing it. We don't pirate over here. Yes, oh. this is not Brendan Job show. We do not. Uh, we do not stream. We do not endorse pirating. Like that. Like, mm -hmm. like those stream sites. Huh. Oh, yeah. but I will say the new uh, price of eighty seventy five eighty dollars for a UFC fight is quite atrocious. Yeah, it is. Uh, is quite pricey though. It's but a shame. Next month's uh, UFC is is definitely going to be worth it. Every penny. Yes. Yes, but, that, that very much is. But still, circling back, is the fact that he was offered the most money out of every heavyweight and he turned it down, like that, that's just insane to me. He was going to be a you know, multimillionaire, get millions to fight when you don't even... I think his last fight, he had, they had under either 500 or 300,000 buys. It was like the least selling of the entire year. And that's mm -hmm. for a heavyweight championship. 
you know, the marquee division. So they say it's the marquee division still, but it really hasn't been in a very long, long time. I, I think unfortunately. That Um, yeah, but I agree with you. I think he overplayed his hand, in all honesty. Uh, especially with, like, the Tyson Fury fight. That talk has, like, fizzled out so badly at this point to where that's not that interesting anymore. I think if they do it, people will pay for it to an extent. But it's more going to be, like, a Jake Paul-type fight, not a main, main fight. Um, I also don't think... I think he overestimated how much... Bellator, PFL, who are the front runners to say they want to pay him, will pay him. I think Bare Knuckle also said they're, they're interested in him. But if he tries to get that kind of money from them, I don't think it's going to happen. Bare Knuckle? My God. Yeah. yeah. Who's brave enough to do that? <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy. He's also a former UFC fighter. Fighting Chris out of uh, Orlando. <laughs> Mike Perry, platinum. Mike Perry, he'll take. Yeah, the he would fight. do it too. He'll take the fight. I say Chris Lieben comes out of retirement for that fight. Nate Diaz, he, uh, he, he, Dana White said he wanted to fight in Ganu. I see. That was that. that was a tactic to get out of his contract. He had one fight left, and he's like, "I don't give a fuck. I'll fight Naganu." <laughs> God. <laughs> hey, I'm fighting Ganu. I'm not gonna lie. You you put enough zeros on it, I'll take that punch. Well damn I'm shooting. I'm shooting. <laughs> I mean, even if you're shooting, oh, yeah. you might shoot your head up like you did over him, so <laughs> I'm taking the I, first jab and falling. I so I heard that he uh also wanted easier fights. He didn't want to fight Jones, apparently. Francis. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that was uh, said by Dana White himself. You know, Dana B. Yeah. He'd be lying. Oh, uh, I'm a I'm a Dana respecter. I, I love Dana White. Even though he uh, he definitely rigs some of these matches with uh Well, when I say rig, I mean. Very uh, tr- putting the finger on the scale, kind of matching up people that should not be matched up, trying to get the champions he wants. I will agree that he has hand fed some people some easy matchups. I won't say rigged, but I will say decided to create a star or two. Oh. Um. If we're, if we're talking about created stars, quote unquote, uh, can we talk about how atrocious Patty, the bad Patty is, and how he needs to be exposed to the casual audience, not the connoisseurs? I was about to say, Patty was pretty exposed in his last fight on how atrocious that fight was. Fight of the night, wasn't it? To the people that want him paid. That's the judging, man. They got to get... Uh, yeah. Ooh, 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 yes. Okay, since we're talking about judging, they need to do what 1FC does. Have their own judges with their own criteria. That's what the UFC does. I don't understand why they can't do it. Is it because they're in America and they have to use the athletic commissions? Yeah. I yeah. think that was, was part of the, the whole... Um, getting UFC not uh, they had to get you know the rules set and then go through the athletic commission and all that but the fact that they haven't worked something well to get like a judging I don't know just uh, it feels really bad to see really talented fighters clearly win in the fight on every by the book definition and to have the judges score it completely ass backwards, it just it's heartbreaking. Yes, very much so. Repeatedly, this happens, and it's terrible. 
Uh, yeah, it was part of the trying to make it a sport versus just human cockfighting, like it was used to be labeled. They had to agree to being commissioned by the Boxing Commission and all that stuff. But they could change the criteria that the judges uh, judge off of. Stop doing these 10 nines or must 10 nines, whatever it's called. 10 point must yeah, system. The 10 hmm? the, the nine is just an awful holdover from boxing. And I, I don't think yeah. it holds sway in MMA. And the, there's like, you know, the judges are almost too hesitant to give a eight, a 10 eight, when it's clearly being dominated, you know? Mm -hmm. They're getting better about 10 eights nowadays, but it's still atrocious. I do like the one FC type judging though, where they judge the fight as a whole, not round by round. So that's always that better. And very healthy. They also have more criteria to what they actually judge. Do you remember what that was, Mosey? I know you had it pulled up at one point. Uh, the judge damage, like, I forgot what it said, external and internal. They judge uh, aggression. They judge basically everything that you would imagine them judging. Take down defense and take down actual landing takedowns, actually going for submissions actually getting out of submissions, like all the stuff that you noticed that with the UFC for a while, it was like takedowns was like plus five points or something. And then you get no points for actually defending the takedown or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And going for mm -hmm. the sub and getting yeah. out of the sub, there was like a greater and lesser than score with that compared to one FC where, and, it, and it's not round base. It's, it's the whole fight. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Yeah, they even judge the fact that if you do take somebody down and you do nothing with it that whole time, you can be carded. That's the best part you can about be... it. Yeah, they, they still have the yellow card and red card system where inactive fighters get yellow carded, and if they get three yellow cards, they're disqualified. Two yellow cards means they have to have a finish. That That's actually a very nice system. I, I mm -hmm. think that uh, judging the fight as a whole would definitely stop some of these atrocious point fighting fighters that we see, these boring fights um, where they don't really do anything. Um, the, was it, um, the Jan fight just recently, the last two rounds, he, he didn't do anything with the, he just laid and prayed after Jan beat the crap out of him for the first three rounds. We're talking about and then somehow, yeah. And then yeah. he 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 was complaining that he he won. Why didn't he get the belt when you know you didn't do anything with your uh, top? You know, you just laid on top of him. Very boring. Yeah, and that's where the yellow cards would come into play. Once they start doing that, they're going to give them an inactive fight, a yellow card, and move it along like the old days used to be in Ryzen, or not, well, Ryzen and Pride type days. People need to respect 1FC a lot more. I'm telling you, we'll be covering that 1FC, some more Bellator, some more Bare Knuckle. What else is there? That what else was the I plans? Mean, of course, UFC. We'll go with yeah, PFL, Bellator, yeah, PFL. Bare Knuckle. I think Eagle FC has died out. Um, Did they? I think so. Habib's even taken a step back from training. He wants to spend time with his family. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. It might be him trying to uh, avoid taking an L. A training <laughs> L? Oh, no, 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 no. He's talking about, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, next month with uh, the little guy. Oh, I got you. Uh, what fight is that? Uh, him against Volkanovski, Makachev. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makachev. I, I got, well, I'm going for Volk, so when it comes <laughs> around to talk about that one, you already got my pick. I'll see what happens between now and then, but yeah, I'm leaning towards Volk, too, on that one, too. Nah, I just don't see it, man. I mean, the only way he loses is decision. That's how I feel. I uh, I don't know if he'd, he'd lose a decision either. Just be, like the the fighter that we've seen with the zombie fight, the last Max fight, he's just such on a such a new level above everyone else he's fought so far. And these are good guys. Um, and I know everyone says Islam is you know new Khabib and all that hype train. Which I mean, it, to be fair, he is a very good fighter. And, you know, he out-wrestles everyone in the lightweight division right now. Um, but I think Volkanovski is the guy to be able to beat him. Uh, you know, he's shorter, stockier, lower center of gravity. I think he's going to be able to stand up much easier. Uh, his knees, you know, he's a great striker. So I, I just don't see uh, Islam winning. Yeah, you got to remember that. He's used to, or he used to carry around a body as a rugby player at 200 plus pounds. So a 155 weight division is probably just going to be healthy for him. It would be great. And they gave him enough time to do it right. So that's going to be a fantastic fight. Yeah. And, you know, Islam and Khabib, they both cut a lot of weight. So that depletion versus Bulk's. Uh... I guess he's going to be more rejuvenated. All right, before we I go too to far ahead, when the, before we get too far ahead in looking into the future with things, we got a fight card coming up this Saturday. It's the Brazil card, right? Glover mm-hmm. against Jamal Hill for the vacant 205 title. There's a lot of vacant titles recently. Isn't that crazy? A little bit. But this about. one for... Good reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes and no. I mean, I wish him the best and he gets healthier, which that, I think he is. But That was the first time that a title fight ended in a draw. A vacant title, right? Yeah. They made history. I, I think uh, it was the universe's traumatic uh, justice for... Um, Jiri, so you know they didn't they didn't let Glover fight. They couldn't give him an extra month, so no no champ Glover gets the championship back with this fight, and then he s- sits on it until Jiri's healthy, and we get the rematch we've all been clamoring for. Well, he's got to so get through Jamal Hill though. That's a tough one. It is a tough one. Mickey Mouse hands is riding high right now. That's what his uh. That's what that is? Those, those Mickey Mouse hands? This is I like, don't know. I will forever call them Mickey Mouse hands. I don't know if they're actually Mickey Mouse hands. But them damn tattoos on his chest look like him. And he's training with uh, Anthony Smith right now. And I think... I could be wrong. But Anthony Smith might be the backup. Just in case. He, he is. He was he supposed is? to fight Jamal Hill. Yeah, originally. And now they're training together, and he's going to be the backup fighter. It's fucked up. That's crazy. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Like, I'm giving you all my secrets. You're giving me your, well, probably not everything, but it's still, they're, like, training together. They probably got rounds upon rounds in, in the gym already. So it's like, what are they going to do if they actually have to fight? I mean, that's also smart on Jamal's sense because, like, Anthony's already fought Glover. Actually, Jamal fought Glover before too, right? Oh, didn't they? Pretty sure they did before. Let's find out. I don't think so. Who else is on that card? Yeah, I ain't got nothing pulled. Uh, up. Gilbert Burns, Trip. Uh, who I'm, I'm very hyped to see. Um, you also have Brandon Moreno. Oh, yeah. yeah, first number four. four. What's that? The quadrilogy? <laughs> Is that even a word? 
the one that I never asked for. The, the, That's the one that I'm calling it. The quad. The why are they doing this again? Well, I mean, right. first fight was a draw. Second fight was a finish. Third fight was a decision. Oh man, they're like odds are right down the middle. Minus one ten for both. Oh, Interesting. My God, Donnie Walker's fighting Paul Craig, and yeah. Paul Craig's the underdog. I got Paul Craig by submission. I miss some Paul Craig. Oh, and Shogun's fighting on the prelims. Oh, Shogun still God. fights. This got to be his last fight. Man, he looks rough. Ah, dog. There's actually quite a few people I never heard of fighting on the prelims. Some of them don't even got a picture yet. They're still like the mystery character. You gotta unlock them. It's a weird photo of him. Oh, Jessica Andrade against Laura Murphy. Oh, God. I feel that's a slaughter. Gilbert Burns probably gets the dub over Neil Magny, like submission. Uh, speaking of Gilbert Burns, um, I, I rewatched the Kamzat Burns fight the other day, and man, people sleep on him because arguably Burns could have won on that car, uh, decision. And I wouldn't have been mad at all. I actually had Burns winning that, that fight, to be honest. That was one we did do a podcast on, and I did have him winning. I was upset with that decision, even though it could have went either way. It, 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 like, when I watched it live, I was like, oh, comes that one now. Then I rewatched it like uh, a few weeks later. I was like, eh, maybe Burns won that. I've gone back and forth, but I looking at it again with the distance, I really think Burns had a strong showing, and people don't realize how good of a fighter he is. So I hope this uh, this win will catapult him into a, a better spot in the division. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I just know, looked I at Jamal actually, Hill's record. He, he's never actually fought Glover before, but I'm getting confused because on the UFC website they have Texterra versus Hill and have a giant two behind them when they have not fought before. Oh. But we know the credibility of the UFC website, so who knows what's going on there. Yeah, I'm looking at the rankings right now. What's up with welterweight, man? It's like stagnant. Yeah. We don't really got no movement right now. I mean, we got a new champion, but they're lined up to fight, what, April or May? March. They're fighting March in March, 18th. too? Yeah, we have two cards in March. Wow. It's the 18th. And... Um, the third, I want to say, or the fourth, fourth. for the Gom Gems. Edwards versus Usman is in August, on August twentieth. No, nope, that was the last one. Never mind. Oh, You're right. It's March eighteenth. They that far out. And March eighteenth. Wasn't uh, Leon and or we, Usman one of them hurt? That was a rumor, um, and then I know Usman posted on Instagram. Him uh, punching in training, showing that his hands were fine. But he was like sarcastic. Oh, yeah, my hands are messed up. But we do know he's had trouble with them in the past. So who knows? Like, who, who do you think would step in to fight uh, Leon if Usman's out? You already know who they're going to put in there. Thumbs up. Yep. What's up with Kobe, man? What what uh Jorge do to him? I think he got tired of his own stick, so he's taking a break. 
Well, I think, um, you know, they tried to offer him the fight with Kamza, but uh, I don't think they were going to give him, make it a number one contender fight because, you know, he had had his two fights with Usman. Um, and why would you fight that guy that's going to get a title shot? But if you beat him, you don't get a title shot. So I think uh, that that's what caused some issues with him. I hope that he does. I hope they do make the combat Colby fight because I think Colby would win that. Because I would 100%, like one hundred percent. That should be the number one contender fight. Because who Especially else would it be? With- Muhammad. Yeah, Bilal. He's I, on a tear right now. I'm not a fan. I do not like Bilal. Is because he uh, the wrestler. I know. I uh, I love Colby, and he's a wrestler. Because he doesn't. He's not a fan of. He doesn't uh, do enough stuff while he's wrestling. Yeah, that and uh, that the eye poke. His uh, his whole behavior oh, yeah. after that. Yeah. I forgot he uh, him and Leon had that little fight. He was losing that round too. Or how many he rounds was getting was destroyed. One round, right? First mm. round, yeah, yeah, he was losing. First, second, but he was getting destroyed. That's why everyone's like, "Oh, you use the eye poke to get out of that fight," even though the eye poke was pretty bad. And he got big <laughs> eyes. Like he got real like, big eyes. That that finger was in there to the knuckle, so <laughs> it's pretty fucking bad. But yeah, he he could have acted a little bit better after that because shit happens. Yeah, uh, unless and, uh... John Jones, John Jones does it on purpose. Well, John Jones is just a sociopath, and God love him for it. You know, his, uh, <laughs> he's truly the supervillain that Colby pretends to be. Correct. Even though he tried to be the Christian God lover at the beginning, he was baby face turned heel. Yeah, well, I, I still remember the, uh, the, what is it, the hot mic during him and Cormier's, uh, talking is like you there bitch and you just started talking all this shit and Cormier is like see if people saw the real you they would hate you and all this other stuff and he's like and then he says I, you know I would spit on you and Jones is like I will kill you if you spit on me and he just keeps repeating it and Cormier is like I would like to see you try Joan, uh, John if you think you could kill me come on but Jones is being 100% I'm going to kill you if you ever do this He is the ultimate heel. The UFC does need him back. I will say that. A lot of people are saying Francis is a huge loss for the UFC. I do not see that as much. But John Jones is definitely a necessi- necessity to come back. What well, I mean, what what uh what was it called? Promotion does well with the Francis signing. I think Bellator? EFL maybe. No I don't one. Succeeding in another organization. You don't see him like, succeed. He oh, he'll succeed. Well, he'll succeed in another organization. He just won't get the money that he's thinking, and he won't get the matchups that he's thinking he's going to get. Yes, that's what I should say. Like he'll do well, but he won't. He'll be the big fish in a small pond. Mm-hmm. And you know, we won't really be hearing like too much from him. You know what I mean? Like these smaller organizations, he's not going to have the the fame and all that, that and the wealth. And... Who's the heavyweight champion in Bellator? Is it Bader? Is it still Ryan Bader? I think he lost it. To oh. be honest, I... and see wait, that he lost one. Why... Well, either way, I, just, I can't think of a heavyweight division that's got. Killers, killers. In it that's going to give him a run for his money. Maybe oh, 1FC. Right. 1FC, man. He it, might get hurt. Bader is still the champ. He's about to defend his heavyweight championships against Fedor again. Because, you know, that hasn't been played out yet. I hope this is Fedor's I will say, fight. though, if... If Nagano goes to any company, it's probably Bellator would be the best for him because Bellator is the only MMA company that's willing to let 
their fighters do other things. So he probably will get that boxing fight that he wants, but it'll be in a rising boxing ring against somebody. Well, you know his phone's ringing off oh. the hook. Yeah, that, uh, I just don't think he's going to get the money he thinks he's going to get. Especially after the pay-per-view, whatever organization gets him, and it doesn't, he doesn't draw like they both think he will. Because all the people that I'm seeing on Twitter and other places saying how, oh, good for Francis, the UFC lost, and you know this is bad for them, and all, blah, blah, blah. They're not people that are buying the pay-per-views. They're not actual, like, hardcore supporters. They're just using this as an excuse to bludgeon Dana in the UFC. Oh, you don't pay your fighters enough, blah, blah, blah. Like Jake Paul? Mm -hmm. Correct. And Jake Paul's only doing that to be relevant. So, I'm of the somewhat controversial opinion that some of these fighters are paid too much. Like uh, a lot of these guys making like twenty five to show, and they really don't deserve it. They're not putting on uh, the show. They're not doing. They're not doing enough to get paid what they're getting paid. You know what I mean? But, you know, you do have some of the big stars that do bring in people and draw from a business perspective, uh, mind you. So, but I, I think a real quick solution that would be healthy for the sport would be healthcare for the fighters, where they will cover you in whatever happens in training camp and not just inside the ring. Because we saw with TJ Dillashaw, the only reason he kept on going through with the fight was because he wanted to have his shoulder surgery paid for. So he had to fight and get it popped out to get them to pay for the, that surgery. So if they just start providing health care for their training camp or just in general to the fighters, or at least they're like, we'll see less fighters going into uh, big fights injured. You know what I mean? So it might it would be healthier for the sport overall. Healthcare is a tough one in fighting sports, though. I so I don't disagree with them not paying them on the outside, but I also think that it would be beneficial in the end for it to be that way. A lot of the big name fighters, though, someone like T.J. Dillonshaw can't afford his own health care. But a lot of the smaller fighters cannot, so I get that. Well, I think dude, healthcare would be a good thing. Oh. What was that? Oh, I, I was saying that uh, he, even though he probably could afford it, he said that in an interview that that's the reason why he kept on going through the, with the fight because he wanted to get it covered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he retired shortly after. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a... I don't think that's an injury that's going to be, like, easily healed. Because that's one of those things that once that starts happening like that, it's prone to happen over and over again. Even the Korean zombie still talks about how his shoulder pops out randomly since the Jose Aldo fight. So, that was a long time ago, too. Right. So, and I don't, I think he was at the point where he's like, look, I got other businesses going on. I don't need this fighting anymore. And if I'm not going to fight for championships, then I don't need this. All right, before we go, let's do one thing. Even though the new year already started, let's pick champions who are not champions right now. By the end of this year, pick one new champion. I mean, technically, two of us already picked one. Oh, yeah, Actually, yeah, all yeah. three of us already picked yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, we got John Jones, right? <laughs> that don't count. 
Well, no, I mean, we all uh, Volkanovski at 155. Oh, that's another one. Oh, man. That don't count. <laughs> name <laughs> name somebody that's on their way to being a, a champion. Let's see. Uh, Uh-oh. Robert Whitaker. You froze, Mark. Robert Whitaker. I did. Yep. Ooh, Robert Can Whitaker. you still hear me, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, then you can have that dumb face there. It looks like a marshmallow. That's like a freeze frame. Yeah. Like... <laughs> well, yeah, you have Robert Whitaker taking his title back. Yeah, I uh, I think he can take down um, Piera. I think he 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 will be able to get it back. That is, if they make that fight, you know, they probably are going to try to push Kamza, but we don't know what weight class he's going to be pushed at. So, I could see Kamza also being a champion, uh, as much as I don't want that to happen. Um, well, I got a new uh, Bantamweight champion. I don't know who, but I think there'll be a new bantamweight champion by the end of the year. And I like Al Jermaine. You think, yeah. you think Al Jermaine's going to lose to Sean O'Malley? Uh-uh. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think so. I think or, he loses think to so Cejudo. Oh, Cejudo comes back, yeah. yeah I think I'll, I'll pick that. Cejudo. I'll pick Cejudo on that. I think Sean O'Malley loses to Cejudo easily. I'll go. I go Kai Car France by the end of the year. Woo! He's still good, but damn. What was that liver kick he ate from uh, Moreno? Yeah. He was winning that fight too. Mm hmm. God, hey, all it takes is one that's shot. What, that's what I'm saying. I say he puts it together like one or two fights at the beginning of the year, and the end of the year, he gets a title shot. What you got, John? Um, let's let's say uh, comes at comes at one seventy. Leon, uh, Leon defends, actually defends against Usman, and then uh, comes up fights someone, and they get put together, and then comes up gets it. Don't want that to happen, but I can see that playing out very easily. Yeah, I know a guy that's on the uh, the hype train, the Boers hype train, like tremendously. But that's all for us today, guys. Uh, you guys got anything to say? Any closing statements? Thanks for having me on. Oh, anytime, John. Anytime. My closing statement will be zip it up and zip it out. Peace. Peace.